Today's guest on the Sea Life Different podcast is Dr. Nicole Garner Scott. She is my first ever returning guest. Formerly a guest on episode 41 titled Money, Wealth, and Entrepreneurship, she is a highly sought after serial entrepreneur, financial expert, and advisor. Nicole uses her story and her experiences to empower others with tools to change their financial trajectories. With over a decade in experience in entrepreneurship, she believes there's more opportunity to serve by helping to reduce the losses by structuring a well-designed plan. She's an Atlanta native, born and raised in College Park, just like my brother and my sister. She's a mother, a wife, and as a financial professional, she's on a mission to also help mothers to set up and enforce money boundaries. Her mission is to help create financial breathing room for households for underrepresented communities and realistic wealth plans to fit any budget. She received her undergraduate degree from GSU, her MBA in digital entrepreneurship from Strayer, and was awarded an honorary doctorate for her work in business. She is also a recipient of the Mayoral Phoenix Award, which is the highest award bestowed in the city of Atlanta. Currently, Nicole has aligned her financial practice with Northwest Mutual through the Money Plan. So we're going to talk about her unique post in helping to build financial security and holistic conversations about money. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back. I'm so glad that you're continuously um, providing such amazing content in this space and very excited to be here. Thank you. And today's one of those conversations where it's, it's necessary. Women have to have it. Black women have to have it. And I feel like what better person than to have this conversation about uh, money and wealth and just financial legacy. Thank you. Thank you. It's um. It's, it's something I'm very passionate about. I feel like um, in, in our space, we've normalized a lot of other conversations, right? And I love it. I love to see the growth that we've, we've uh, normalized um, mental health, or we're starting to, you know, really get that out there. We've normalized not being a superwoman anymore, uh, you know, normalized self-care, taking time for yourself. Uh, but for some reason, when it comes to financial conversations, that still tends to be somewhat taboo um, because it's, it's personal, right? It, it You feel like it's a reflection of your choices. You feel like it's a reflection of what you have, uh, your belief system, um, the traumas, the financial triggers, whatever it is, you feel like when you sit down and talk about money, it reveals a lot of that. And so we tend to shy away from that conversation um, more than none. And I love just really being on this mission of making sure that we, we just remove the mask, we remove any embarrassment. Um, you'd be surprised, you know, you never know what's going on in people's households. And we make it look good on social media, but everyone has questions on, in regards to money. Uh, we, we feel like we know it so well because we've touched it since we were little, right? You, you, I mean, from when you were little and your uncle used to give you $20 or from, you know, however, however money entered into your life as a child, you've you've touched, touched money and spent money and received money. So you feel like you know money, but when it comes down to how money is utilized as a tool and um, the methods and strategies surrounding money, you know, many, many people need outside help. They need a money team. They need an advisor, a planner, a financial professional to sit down and talk with them and, and someone who's studying this and keeping their eyes on it all the time. Yes, and I'm so glad you, you started with that because I feel like that's literally where it starts. It starts when we are little girls of what were we told and not told about money, that financial trauma that comes with money. Um, and then the frugality versus, you know, living the luxurious of having it. So let's talk about the differences between that that you've observed. I guess it starts in the mind, start with mindset. Um, what is the typical transition process that really can help women to go from uh, living almost too frugal to, you know, living in abundance? So living in abundance is <clears throat> really shifting from scarcity mindset but you have to have that courageous conversation with yourself about being, being very honest that you are living in scarcity, 
um, and I say courageous conversations, there's, <clears throat> there's a, a, a book by Brene Brown, who's a, an awesome, awesome woman, uh, who just talks about having that honesty talk with yourself, right? Peeling back those those layers of the onion and really before you expect anyone else to be honest with you, you, you having to be honest with yourself. Um, but many of us have uh, equated scarcity to our, our normalcy, right? So if you grew up in a very, very frugal home, then that just became the way, right? You, you're trying to beat every price out there. Um, when something is discounted at a rate you're grabbing it whether you need it or not, because who knows, you might need it in the future. And when you need it, you might not be able to afford it. Um, you're, you're making choices based upon what is the cheapest opportunity to bring this item into your life. Um, and I grew up that way, very, very frugal, um, you know, and, and that became my way of, of normalcy until I started realizing that I was um, um, impacting quality of life. Right. And on the on the reverse end, you're overspending for those things anyway. Right. So when you get a very inexpensive car and it's a lemon, by the time it's all said and done, by the time you've broken down, by the time you've replaced this transmission and got new brakes and such and such, you might as well have gotten a new car. Right. And it, it takes you going through that a few times sometimes to wake up and be like, this could have been money well spent somewhere else, um, the, the amount of peace that I've lost, the, the quality of life that I sacrificed, living in scarcity has, hasn't served me. And, um, you know, I got to a, a place in my life where I realized this, this way of being just no longer served me in, in, in my life. And so um, I had to let go of a lot of that scarcity mindset, but also to education, plays a big role and I don't and by all means I love school I, I, I won't debate anybody on if college is for you if it's not for you we all have our own different opinions on that but I'm talking about financial education right there's there's a lot of information that was purposely kept from our communities right it was purpose you know women couldn't even open up their own bank accounts until a few decades ago like it, it, it wasn't I, I think a lot of us forget how knew this is, you know, I, I see a lot of memes that shun, you know, older generations, but they didn't even have some of these rights. Like some of our grandparents or great grandparents couldn't even go out and, and purchase property. They couldn't go out and open up their bank account without a man signing off on that. They couldn't, you know, do a lot of things that we can financially do now without there being a man there to do that. So, um, you know, so, so a lot of these things are were purposely kept, information was purposely kept. And that's when you have to decide that you want to go out and seek the people around you that know that information, that want to make sure you're well empowered with that information and taking that information and using it to make very viable decisions in regards to things. Um, YouTube is great, but YouTube can only get you so far. Google is great, but Google can only get you so far, you know? And so that's when you have to get with people that really understand um, financial strategy. And I'm so glad you mentioned, um, you know, just how far, semi-far we've come, at least when it comes to property, because I agree, I've, I saw some memes and jokes around about, um don't don't sell your grandmama's house you know mm -hmm. like some people are also debating especially you know where we are in this pandemic of like uh renting is is better renting is better so what is your take on that on um, what uh what vow really people should go when it comes to the value of real estate so this is what i i sincerely believe you have to look at your own scenario and um, really customize a plan that meets yours, right? Because a lot of people are getting into real estate investment, but they have emergency, uh, emergency funds that are fully funded, that are in place. They have other parts of their portfolio that can withstand them making riskier choices. They have um, you know, secure revenue, fees coming in. And then you have someone else that follows that same advice. And that was their last dollar. 
right? Like they put it all into real estate because everyone said real estate is the move. That was their last dollar. Um, that real estate investment was not a good investment and they pretty much wiped out everything behind them. And so I think that's where, while I love social media and I love information, many times when people ask me blanket information, I'm like, hey, DM me, call me, let's set up a meeting and let me assess everything that's going on with you right now so that we make strong decisions. Cause I might say, hey, hold off and get your emergency fund in place. Like make sure that should anything else happen cause life happens, right? Like you can be making all of these great real estate moves. You can be, you know, investments can be going crazy. There's no, there's no uh, cushion for you. Something happens in life. And then now you have to take all your gains that you just got from your investments and use them to pay for this emergency. So I'm very, very much about doing things in order, laying the foundation, having your defense strategy, your proper insurances, your proper risk management, things in place, then having your emergency fund in place, understanding your cash flow, understanding you know, how you spend, why you spend, getting to the root of that. And then building on top of that, then, then knowing what your risk tolerance is, then building, you know, a plan and a strategy that, that matches that. Um, and then also too, you know, sometimes it's not, uh, it's not, you have to do everything. You might have someone who makes these investments on your behalf. You might have, you know, open a brokerage account and, uh, you know, have people actively managing those things for you because, even though you have the money, you might not be the, the best equipped to do that. And then maybe you are, you know, so it, 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 it just kind of depends. Um, and that's the thing when people um, go after like blanketed advice and they apply it to themselves, but they're not taking that extra step to see what is all the details that this person has in place, you know, um, uh, that I typically see a lot of individuals, they'll, they'll go after what is that big shiny thing that everyone's talking about, you know, and when they're listening to that person, they're not taking into account that this person has no mortgage. Their, per, their family gave them a house, right? Their, their family gave them four properties. So, 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 so what? So they lose 20,000 tomorrow. Okay. You know, it's no big thing. You lose 20,000 tomorrow and you're ready to sue somebody because how, what are you going to do to be able to bounce back? So, um, you know, doing a little due diligence in regards to that, and then really understanding that rich and wealth, they don't, they don't really have a look, right? So, so a lot of us tend to gravitate and follow what we feel like looks rich or what we feel like looks wealthy. And um, it's interesting. I, I was talking to a group of middle schoolers the other day, and I said, what, is, um, what, is, what does rich mean to you guys? What does wealthy mean to you guys? And they, you know, they were all throwing out, it means I can buy all the Jordans I want, or it means that we have the biggest house on the block, or it means, and I was like, you know what's so funny? If, if adults were sitting in here, they would laugh, but their minds are thinking the same thing too right? Who you're following for financial advice is who has the biggest house on the block or who has the most Jordans or who has the such and such. And you have to get to the root of wealthiness gives you, gives you peace of mind. It gives you options and it gives you um, the uh, ability to live later on in life without running out of money. And so those are things that you can't really see right? Like uh, people who are making very wealthy moves, you know, to make sure that generational wealth is left behind, to make sure that they don't outlive their money. You can't see that per se on social media. You can't see that visually, but it's being done. And so you have to kind of redefine in your mind, what is wealth? Or you sound like the group of middle schoolers I was talking to the other day. It might not be as like, oh, I get all the pink Jordans. It might not come out like that, but if you really sit down and think about it, it still sounds somewhat like that of who you're seeking your advice from. You know, it's many times people will be like, 
oh, wow. Like you take advice from her. I, you know, she, I haven't seen her on a yacht. I haven't seen it. It's, it's like, you know, it's like, that's, that's, that can't be what we, we determine to be wealth, you know, like wealth is, 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 uh, an opportunity for you to be able to control the controllables, you know, and, um, that's something that that's very important to me. Yes, I'm so glad you brought up that example because I was watching an interview the other day with Akon, mm-hmm. and he brought up the example of um, there's so many music artists that he would work with. And it's like, yeah, you see the music video, you see the Bentley, but you don't know that after that shoot, uh, you know, is finished, they're renting that, they're returning that Bentley, they're returning those gold chains, they don't own it. (laughs) So I'm like, yeah, I think that's what gets easily misconstrued is that, you know, those who do actually own it, like they, you won't know that they actually have more than one property, more than one, you know, source of um income, you know, for their creativity. So, yeah. And speaking of Akon, he actually also just recently um, launched a Bitcoin uh, currency. Mm-hmm. So speaking of talking about all the shiny new object thing, what about the Bitcoin conversation that's happening now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think in regards to um, the Bitcoin conversation, that's when you really need to align yourself with those. It's a very complex space because everyone's talking about it. It seems much more muddled down than what people really understand it to be. And there are a lot of resources, um, that are available, but I would align yourself with someone who is very vested in the high level complexity of it um, and not necessarily just continue to shoot off at the hip. It's a very volatile space, right? Meaning um, it's high risk, you know? And so with high risk, yes, there is high reward and yes, there is high loss, you know, to to both. Um, But I think you behoove yourself to align with, with professionals in that space um and to understand you know we have the metaverse is here i I mean we could argue that the metaverse has been here the metaverse has been here for decades um now it's just becoming accessible to the average day person but how money will how money will work in the ai space I'm reading more and more about that. That's going to be very interesting. You know, like you might be able to make money in the metaverse and then bring it back into the universe. Like it's just, it's a lot of, I mean, how we're going to perceive things is going to be very, very drastically different, you know, over the next couple of decades. And so it always, it always is important to understand change is a constant. Um, to understand that money was never the paper exchange or the car that's in front of you. Money is a representation of value exchange. Um, and once you once your mind wraps around that concept, then you really understand money, right? It's never it's never the what's sitting in per- purposely in your bank account, but what does that afford you? What is the value exchange? What is the value proposition that that's aligned with? Um, uh, when you are building up your wealth, what is that affording you to make sure that if you ever get sick, you could take care of it to make sure that if you pass away, um, your loved ones are still very well taken care of to make sure that, um, you know, should there be anything that you want to do for your children that you can do such it's the value proposition. And so it behooves you to understand what's happening in the future. Um, and to understand that change and to understand that dynamic. Um, but I'm, I'm still a big fan of, of there's experts in it and align yourself with such. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. Um, like you, you also willing to learn and there's still so much to learn and that's why we're here to help each other out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now we're coming to the end of the conversation. And so what are your tips for... Um, going into the new year, um, having a well of those financial plan, a financial plan that can be put in place starting today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
I like to say a plan for your money is a plan for your life, right? And when you have a good plan, um, like especially our, our team, we help you have money and choices during the best times of your life. And then we also help you have money and choices during the worst times of your life. And that's when you really want to have a plan, right? Like, it, I mean, by all means, it feels good when everything is working well and everything is well oiled. But when things start to bottom out and you have that plan in place, then you know it's just it's just getting through the emotional side of it. But you can trust the strategy in place. Um, so I would definitely say one um, finding you know finding a good financial professional with a teacher spirit, you know someone that understands uh, that there is a, a financial information gap. And they can, they're not just trying to put you into products. They're trying to make sure that you understand and you have a very well, um, a a well-versed understanding of how to optimize and and what your long-term plan is. I think that you have to, before this year is over with, you got to look your finances in the eye and just get very real with your finances and understand what your cash flow is, right? I'm not going to throw out the, the B word, which is budget. But you, you know, you have to get very real as to what's coming in and what's going out. And what is that surplus that you have at the end of the day? And then you got to start, you know, creating a plan to give those extra dollars a job or they'll just start to disseminate. I think that you need to have your defense strategy in place, you know, so uh, assessing where you are with like your life insurance, understanding that there's death benefits and living benefits to life insurance. I think that you need to have those talks with your family members, right? Over the holidays um, or, you know, any, any, any time that your family gathers is, you know, do, does everybody have a will done? Is that in place? Uh, Do you actually own your home? Asking your parents that, do they have, do your parents and your grandparents have life insurance? Do they have long-term care? Um, you know, will you and your, you know, if anything happens to your parents, will that fall on you, on your siblings, on you and your spouse? Like just really going through a lot of those conversations is going to be very, very key. Um, and then you could be proactive on things instead of being reactive. Be active versus proactive. That's definitely a whole conversation in Mm -hmm. its own because there's so many emotional reactions that do come out of money (laughs) money making decisions so (laughs) now since this is i I know people got a lot of information and they're probably looking you up as they're listening right now so where can they find you on social media yes my personal um on instagram is dr garner scott dr g as in good a r n as in nancy e r scott s-c-o-t-t um, uh, if you want to know more about my initiative, it's the Money Plan Inc. And that's I-N-C. And then if you're interested in booking a financial call, a consultation with me and my team, you can go to the moneyplaninc.com. And um, I think that would be great to, to really get your year in gear and um, make sure that you're tracking to your future life the way you want to. Perfect. Now, I usually have like a three-part series I love to ask every guest at the end of their conversation, but I'm kind of going to improvise a little bit for you. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. So where do you want to travel to? Not just the um, next best place, but if there are some others out there that are listening and they're trying to get ideas of where they could go within their financial budget, where would you suggest to travel to within the next year? So, um, so listen, I have all the, fi- all the hacks when it comes to traveling, but all you have to do is just go against the popularity. So, um, it, it, if you're going, so basically if we're on the expressway, you need to go against the traffic. <laughs> like you need to go, uh, if everybody is is heading, uh, you know, 85 South because they're all getting off of work, you need to figure out what's going to take for you to go 85 North. So typically I'll travel during off seasons. Um, I'll travel against tourism. So um, uh, like if you go into the Caribbean, 
everyone tries to go to the Caribbean during the summertime, you know, that is, that's big. So if you can figure out a way to go during an awkward time, like in the fall, then of course you're going to save money in that realm. Um, I have all the apps on my phone, the Hopper app, um, the hotel tonight, the, you know, where they're sending out all those different things and you just hop in on travel. The travel industry took a very big hit during the pandemic and we're still kind of, we call it um, pandemic, you know, in that moment. Petty. Right now. <laughs> Petty. Yeah, but, yep. And so with that, there's, there's too many ways to find um, travel deals. I think you just got to if you're flexible with your date, you go during off times, you go against the, the, the grain, then yeah, you can totally travel on your budget. You know, like Tulum, Tulum became like very popular over the pandemic. Greece became very popular over the pandemic, but you could still go during off times and, and make those times count. Mm -hmm. I love those tips. And now what do you want your financial legacy to be? Um, I think making sure that women become the CFOs of their homes in the most empowered way. So no more of, I'm not the numbers girl. I let my husband handle all of that. I don't really know. Um, no more of, of those conversations, you know, like it, 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 to have two heads is better than one. So if you are, you know, cohabitating with someone or living with someone, I think it's better to have two people focus on that than one. And then also too, if for instance, if in the instance you're the better one with finances, then feel empowered to do such. I think we have to let go of gender, no, gender boxes on who should do what, or that doesn't even make sense. If you're the better cook, then you cook. If, I, if I'm for some reason, know how to cut grass better than I cut grass. What, whatever that is, whoever whoever needs to, to grab the wind and grab the wind. Um, so yeah, just definitely making sure of that. And then I, seeing as many um, people speak to the cultural sensitivities our communities go to when it comes to finances. So always speaking to bring that conversation back to the forefront. You know, there, there's a lot of different things that have gotten us to the places we are financially that, that a lot of us take personal, but it's because things weren't designed. There was a lot of systematic things that were, were where we are right now. And so um, understanding that and making sure people are aware of that so that we can continue to empower and build um, from that level of truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got a long way to go, but you are right there. You're that midway for us, and I know you got us, but... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for another great, insightful conversation, Nicole. Perfect. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs>